engaged with the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it that unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua volatare Dei, et Dei glitifica, Dumnezeu tutum Helen. Unicum et es et de cerni causum em de gente non sancta, ma homen et enum quodro sorbo, Amen. Quae tu est Deus, fodi cum me, guarde felicis, quale tricis in cielo tu me fligi me di vicus. Eve de vocem tu libertatum tu, nimse me de luxerum, de luxerum di montum sanctum tonum et tabernacula tua. Et in tua idolatare Dei, et Dei politifica et vivum tutum eum. Confidevo chi vincitera Deus Deus meus, quae tricis anima mea, ricorde cum tua vans me. Sper in del conima et hoc confidevo ini, salutare vocus me, et Deus meus. Gloria Patria, Filio e Spirito e Santo, si coderat in principio e non che sempre, ed in secula seculorum. Amen. In tua volatare Dei, ed in glitifica di un tutto meum. Audio Torre Nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci cielo e terra. Confiti o Dei Potenti, via di Maria e Virgine, via di Italia e Cangelo, via di Juan Battista e Santi Sposti, Spetri e Paolo, via di Juan Maria e Viani, on due Santi di Rubis Fratrens, qui et cabinimis cogitazione bevo et opere, me occulta, me occulta, me a maxima occulta. Ed io prego, beata Mariam, sed Virgine, beata Michele, ma Cangelo, beata Giovanna Battista, Santos Apostolos, beata Michele, beata Giovanna Maria, Viani, amne, Santos Apostolos, fratrens, orrare con me, dobbiamo dare il nostro. E se io tutti vieni potenti, se io si riesco a distruire tutta te, vita in eterno. Amen. Confiti, O Deo, Omnipotenti, Beate Maria Sempre Vigili, Beate Michele Arcangelo, Beate Ioanni Battista, Santi Apostoli Spetri e Paolo, Omnibus Santi e Divi Pate, Qui è da venire in scogitazione, Vevo e Opere, Me occulta, Me occulta, Me al maximo occulta, E io prego Beate Maria Sempre Vigili, Beate Michele Arcangelo, Beate Ioanni Battista, Sanctus Apostolos Petrus Paulum, Omnes Sanctus et Dei Pater, Orrari pro me, ad Dominum Deo Nostro. Misericato Vest, mi potenti Deus, et misis peccatis Vestris, per tutta la vostra vita me tenam. Amen. Urgenisem esclusione, mi trimissione, perché d'ora non suora in te mi vedno, mi sono di potente, misericus Dominus. Amen. Deus, tu conversi per tutta la vita, e plenti tu le tavi tor in te. Nos tendi nobis Domine misericordiam Tua, et salutare Tuum per nobis. Domine exaudi razione meo, et travoles et eveniam. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito Tuo, orremus. Sacerdotes Dei, benedicite Dominum, Sancti et humiles corde, laudate Deum. Benedicite Omnia opera Domini, Domino, laudate et superexultate Eum in secula. Gloria Patria, Filio e Spiritu e Santo, sicoderat in principio e non che sempre, et in secula seculorum amen. Sacerdotes Dei, benedicite Dominum, Sancti et humiles corde, laudate Deum. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, 
Chrysalaison, 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 Chrysalaison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gracias a chimus divi propte magnum gloriam tuam. Domine Deus Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Onipotens, Domine Filio Unigenite, Jesus Christe, Domine Deus Amnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tales peccato mundi miserere nobis, qui tales peccato mundi suscipe deprecazione nostra, qui se les ed exeram Patris miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus Sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus, Jesus Christe, Cum Sancto Spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Ex vobis et cum Spirito tu. Orlebus. Deus, qui nos pihazzi, plasi matine tue atque pontificis, annuos in emnitate rectificas, concede propitius, Ut cuius natalitia calibus Deus de metziam protectione galeamus. Per Dominum nostrum, Iaesum Christum, Filium Tuum, Pitecum de Vesarenia, Duneritatis, Spiritus Sancti Deus, Per Romnia secula, seculorum. Amen. Ordeus. Pancete nos famulus tuus, Praesimus Domine Deus, Perpetio amentis et populis sanitate gaudere, et glorios e beate malie sempre viginis et agestione, e presenzi liberali tristizia, ed eterna perfume letizia. Ecclesia tue calcimus domini pregis lo calcus admite, ut distruxis a tue sessasi bus et oribus universi sicuri tibi servi et libitate. Er nobilum nostrum, Iaesum Christum, Filium Tum, videi cum vivere regni a dominitati sui tu santi Deus, per romnia secula, seculorum, Amen. Lexi Epistole Viazzi Pari Apostoli et Corinthios. Fratres, benedictus Deus et Pate Domini Nostri, Iesu Christi, Pate Misericordiarium et Deus Tolsius Consolationis, qui consulatur nos in omni tribulazione nostra, ut possimus et ipsi consulare eus, qui omni presciura sunt per exhortationem, que exhortamur et ipsi ad Deo. Quoniam sicut abundant passiones Christi in nobis, ita et per Christum abundant consolatio nostra. Sive autem tribulamo pro vestra exhortazione et salute, sive consolamo pro vestra consolazione, sive exhortamo pro vestra exhortazione et salute, quae operatu toleranciam eliarundum passionum, quas et nos patimur, ut spes nostra firma sit pro vobis, Scientes quod sicut soci passioni mestis, sic eritis et consolationis, in Christo Iesu Domino nostro. Deo gratias. Gloria et honor de coronasti eum, et constituisti eum super opera manium tuarum Domine. Beatus vire quis time Dominum, demandatis eius cupidinis, Potens in terra erit semeneius, generatio rectorum benedicetur, gloria et divizia in domo eius, et justitia eius manet in seculum seculi. Nominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti evangelii secundum et teum. Gloria a tibi Domine. In ino tempore dixi Jesus e Cipris suis, si quis vult post me vinere, amne get semet ipsum, et volat crucem suam, et sequatur me, cui ene volverit animam suam salvam facile, perdit aeam, cui autem bedinerit animam suam propte me, in veniet aeam. Quid enim prodes mohomini, si mundum universum lucretur, anime verusu e detrementum patiatur? Aut quam David homo commutationem pro anima sua? 
filios edim hominis ventum ses in gloria patris sui comangilis suis, et cum credi uniquique secundum opera eius. Laus tibi Christ. On this, the Feast of St. Blaise, Bishop of Sebast and Martyr. The lesson is from the Epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we also may be able to comfort them who are in all distress, by the exhortation wherewith we also are in all distress, by the exhortation wherewith we also are exhorted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so also by Christ doth our comfort abound. Now whether we be in tribulation, it is for your exhortation and salvation, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation, or whether we be exhorted, it is for your exhortation and salvation, which work is the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer that our hope for you may be steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For he who would save his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world, but suffer the loss of his own soul? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will render to everyone according to his conduct. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hor motis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, as we said, the Feast of St. Blaise, Bishop of Sebast who was martyred on this day in the year 316, 316 AD, condemned by the, uh, uh, by the governor Agricolaus on the orders of the Emperor Licinius, who had instituted a final persecution, as it were, of the Christians before peace would come to the empire after his defeat by Constantine. According to tradition, Blaise was a physician, a noted healer, who exercised this ministry of healing in conjunction with that of his vocation to the ministerial priesthood. He was famed for his charity, for his solicitude of the health of his people. He was known too uh, to be uh, popular with the animals. It is said that uh, he spent, uh, he preferred to uh, live a solitary uh, life so that he was uh, based outside the city, uh, living in, the, in a cave in the woods, in the forest, and there he would be assisted by the animals. When the soldiers came to arrest the bishop after the edict of Licinius uh, enacted by the governor, Agricolos, uh, they found uh, the bishop uh, secluded in the forest and took him back to the city there to face trial. It is said en route that an elderly woman complained to the bishop that a wolf had taken her pig. It is said that Blaise spoke to the wolf 
who surrendered the pig back to the elderly woman. And in token of uh, gratitude and affection for the bishop's intervention, the elderly woman gifted to him two long taper candles to give light to him in his dark cell. More about those candles in a moment. He was brought before the governor, there sentenced to death uh, for being a Christian. But first he was scourged with wire combs, his uh, flesh uh, torn with metal wire combs, before then being taken to prison and there to be beheaded. En route, according to legend, en route from trial, uh, after sentencing to the prison, a Christian woman ran up before the bishop carrying a son whom she placed at his feet, whom she believed to have died choking on a fishbone. St. Blaise interceded, prayed, and the boy was miraculously healed. And so it is to this day that ordinarily we would have the blessing of throats at the end of Mass, invoking the intercession of St. Blaise and placing two tapered candles made of the sign of a cross either side of the neck of those being blessed. And there, my brothers and sisters, is the tradition concerning St. Blaise. What, my brothers and sisters, may we extract from this beautiful legend concerning this saint? In the first instance, let us recall that he was famed as a healer. Now, what passed for being a physician in fourth, early 4th fourth century Lesser Armenia in the city of Sebast is anyone's guess. Quite to what level uh, of uh, uh, medicinal prowess uh, the bishop was known for, or surgical prowess, uh, or just faith healing prowess, uh, that's now lost to the mysteries of time. But he was, of course, not just a physician of bodies, but also too, and perhaps more importantly, a physician of souls. And it is perhaps chiefly that for which his example and testimony is remembered to this day. A physician of souls. Yes, indeed, for sure, he was perhaps obviously gifted in the healing of bodily ailments. But we notice that in the intervention with the little boy choking on a fishbone, that Blaise reacts first by praying. And his prayer is efficacious enough that the boy is healed. How often, my brothers and sisters, do we in times of distress, times of anxiety, how often do we in times of illness turn first to God before we start ringing the NHS helpline, consulting a friend, reaching for the medicinal cabinet, how often do we turn to God first in prayer when difficulty arises, when something uncomfortable occurs? Now, there's nothing to say, just because the legend doesn't mention it, that St. Blaise perhaps didn't afterwards touch the throat of the boy and dislodge the fishbone. Who knows? It doesn't matter. The principle is that St. Blaise at once turned first toward God. In this, of course, fulfilling the first of the great commandments. 
to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. St. Blaise, living a life of charity that is in communion with God, turned to him first. We should, my brothers and sisters, as Christians, all of us, likewise, be thinking of God first and foremost in our hearts and minds at all times and at least striving to do so at all times. Such we call living in holy fear which of course does not mean to live afraid of God but rather to live aware of God's presence. Doing so enables us to avoid sin and enables us to grow in holiness and communion with God. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that this is the whole point of our lives as Christians, communion with God. And this is why our Lord says in the Gospel today, He who loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his own soul? A great many of us, if we are honest, do not put God first in our hearts and minds do not carry him first in our thoughts and minds. And many of us strive and expend our energies in the pursuit of material comfort in this life before we give consideration to the state of our soul. Just think about that for a minute. The vast majority of us care more for our material comfort than we do for God. And the evidence for this is in the fact that the vast majority of us do not think of God and do not turn to him first in all things. You see, communion may be expressed with another word, fellowship or indeed friendship. In this pre-season of Lent known as Jessima, we might spend some time analysing our communion with God, our relationship with him, and ask ourselves, do I live my life in fellowship with God? Do I live my life in friendship with God? When something exciting happens in my life, do I turn to God first to tell him to give thanks, to share my joy? Or do I text a friend or ring a friend and share my joy with them first? When something uncomfortable happens in my life, do I turn first to God in prayer and ask his assistance? Or do I 
text or ring and contact a friend first and share with them my sorrow or my anxiety. In all the decisions that I may make in at any given point on any given day, How often in my decision-making process is my first thought to consult God? How often Do I go about the business of my affairs and never once think of God? Unless or until I am prompted by some meme on social media By popping a glance in my mind, by popping a glance at the crucifix on my wall, on a prayer card, discarded on a sideboard. Perhaps I notice the spine of the Bible on my shelf. Maybe then I think of God. But in the ordinary, normal routine of my life, how often do I think of God? How often do I think to consult him? How often do I think to include him? How often do I think to ask him? And when those decisions come, as they do throughout the day, to choose righteousness or sin, to serve another rather than myself, to express sacrificial love or self-satisfaction. How often do I, perhaps then, prompted by temptation, think momentarily of God, dismiss that thought and enact the sin. And in my heart and in my head, do I think to myself that sin has ramifications, that sin distances me from God. That sin prevents me from realising God's generous grace. That sin prevents me from availing myself and cooperating with God's help. Remember, and I know I've said it several times in the last couple of weeks, but it's a really fundamental, important principle and lesson to learn. Sin distances us from God. Not him from us, but sin creates a barrier between us and him. For he that is all holy cannot commune with that which is tainted. Every time we sin, we taint our souls in such wise that we distance ourselves from God. We create an invisible barrier which prevents the fullness of his grace and mercy and love from reaching us, touching us and being operative within us. 
And the trouble is, my brothers and sisters, is that we go day by day accumulating sins. Building higher and higher that barrier. Distancing ourselves from him. And then when real problems happen, we expect miracles to occur. We who have so distanced ourselves from God. But have so convinced ourselves that these little sins don't matter. Physician, heal thyself. You know, there is an easy remedy to this situation to prevent this build-up of barrier and distance between ourselves and God. And that's to practice self-examination at the end of every day before retiring to bed. To think back on the day and try to recognise those occasions when we did not love God as we ought. Often, these will be indicated by the way in which we did not love our neighbour. But having recognised these faults, we should then confess them remembering and trusting the words of the psalmist. A humble and contrite heart the Lord will not despise. And by making a genuine act of contrition and believing wholeheartedly in the promises of Christ, trusting in the fruits of his passion, death and resurrection, realized by our baptism we should know God's forgiveness and thus go to our rest with an easy conscience and with a grateful heart knowing that we commend ourselves to sleep in communion in fellowship, in friendship with God. We see also in the life of some plays a desire for that true communion with God by his taking himself to live outside of the city. Now, whether or not and what it means to suggest that he had a relationship with the animals like Dr. Doolittle is neither here nor there. One suspects that simply refers to the charitable nature of his being. And animals, remember, have a sixth sense about human character. Because of the charity, charitableness of his being, no doubt, animals were not afraid of him. No doubt, he was able to treat them as though tame. Perhaps even he was blessed to be able to communicate with them in some way. After all, 
we all think, my brothers and sisters ourselves, that we are really communicating with our pets when we talk to our dogs and our cats, to our budgies and our hamsters. We all think we are communicating. We don't actually know if they really understand what we're saying. But certainly intonation and inflection, especially in command or in praise or in affection, they certainly respond. point here is that St. Blaise carried about him such a state of being that even wild beasts grew close to him, were not afraid of him, perhaps would even do his bidding. In other words, my brothers and sisters, he conveyed about him something of the Creator, about his bearing, about his nature. He was not threatening, but welcoming. After the manner of our Lord, one is certain that he expressed humility. Now this bearing, this attitude, of course, though remarkably noticed about animals, was also true of people. That they went and sought him that they came to him with their troubles and their afflictions, that they appreciated him, such that he was given gifts to sustain him in his semi eremitical life. They were drawn to him as souls indeed are drawn to Christ. The question then we might ask ourselves is, are people drawn to Christ through me? What is there or is there anything about my manner, my demeanor, my bearing, my character? that makes me open, approachable, that makes me someone that people think to turn to in times of anxiety or distress or even in times of joy. Do people search me out to share with me significant things in their lives? Do people come to me with problems? Do people come to me for advice? Do people come to me seeking my opinion? Do people come to me for comfort? For consolation. Do I, like St. Blaise, have the bearing and manner and humility and charity of Christ about me, such that souls are drawn? Now remember, my brothers and sisters, here we're not talking about ego.
but consider. Do people ask on a regular basis for your prayers? Do you get the sense that people approach you in times of distress because of your faith? Do you see and do you recognize that these opportunities, when they occur, are opportunities for you to manifest Christ to them? To share your faith with them by expressing your trust in God by promising them your prayers, by assuring them of your care and concern for them. Do you offer help? Are you known to be someone to come to when someone needs help. These, my brothers and sisters, are signs and occasions and promptings for us to realize our true selves in Christ. by humbling ourselves to allow him to serve those in need. Again, something for us to think about today and every day. And finally, note the absolute trust and confidence in God by St. Blaise. That he is steadfast in faith to the end. That he bears the torture because he trusts in God, because his desire is on that final prize of eternal life. Because he knows that nothing in this life is comparable to that in the next. And when life in this life is threatened, he sees it as nothing compared to the realization of eternal life with God. Do you have a sincere and genuine desire in your heart to be with God? such that whatever trials and tribulations befall you in this life, you are ready to bear and endure them all for the sake of the kingdom of God? Do you trust in God such that in times of trial and tribulation, you are comforted by the knowledge that God is with you and that you have been enabled to share and thus to offer in your suffering yet a sacrifice of love like that of Christ upon the cross for us. When you suffer, do you think to unite yourself with him upon the cross? 
for the sake of others. Do you bear and endure suffering meekly, humbly, so as not to distress those around you, but rather to manifest your trust and faith in God? Or do you fear death? You see, as Christians, we have no need to fear death. Because if we, living now, are in communion with God, we know that we will be in communion with him hereafter. And so our thoughts would return to our first question. After the manner of St. Blaise, do you turn to God first? What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his own soul? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. In veni David servum eum, oleo sancto eum sieum, manus enim per seriabitore, et brachium em confortabit eum.
Ronia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spiritu tuo, sus in corda habemus and domino. Gracias a Domus domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum teis. Vere dignum et justum et tecum et salutare nos divi sempre et ubitre et gracias agile et domine sante pater onipotens et teme teis. Per Christum Dominum Hostum, ecco me statum tuum laude d'angeli adorante dominazione estremus potestates, ceni cerum per vetute de beati serfim, socio sultazioni con celebran, con cui vos nostri voci tutti miti ubeste per camur, supplici confessione di gentes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Ave Alta, plenis un cieli et terra gloria Tua, usanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, usanna in excelsis.
Perron ya se cura se curor. Amen. Orle, precenti salutaribus moniti divine seduzioni formati, audemus dice. Ad nos del quiesi cedi sanctificetum nomen tuum, ad veni ad regnum tuum fiel volontas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Anem nostrum quadrianda nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, Sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentatione, sed libra nos a mano. Perdon ya secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum et cum spirito tu. Annus Dei, qui talis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Annus Dei, qui talis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Annus Dei, qui tales peccato mundi, dono nomis pace. Domine, non sono dignus. Domine non sum dignus, Domine non sum dignus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce quitolit peccatum mundi. Domine, non sum dignum sud intra e sud ectum meum, se tantum dec verbo, et se nabitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignum sud intra e sud ectum meum, 
Brothers and sisters watching Mass online are unable, therefore, to receive the Blessed Sacrament. We invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from Thee.
Vos juvisti domine in capite eus coronam de lapide preciosum. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tu. Ordemus. Ec nos communio domine porce da crimine, et in accidente beato plasio matire tu atque pontifice, celestis remedii faci a te se consortes. Per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tu, Qui te cum vive da regna ad unanitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per romia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Sum sis domine salutis nostre sursiis, da quaesmus veiate marges, quaesmus domine Deus nostre, ut vos divine tribuis participazione cadere, umanis non sinis sebe et cene periculis. Per domino nostrum, io esum Christum filium tu, Qui te cum vive de regna ad unanitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per ogna secula, seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum Spirito tuo, ite missa est, Deo gratia. Sed nomen Domini benedictum ex aut nunc dusque in secula, audutor nostrum in Domini Domini, cui feci celum et terram, benedicat vos omnipotens Dei. Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, initium sancti evangelii, secundo mio Padre, gloria tibi Domini. In principio et verbum, et et verbum, et et apodeum, et eus et et verbum, hoc erat in principio apodeum, omnibris un factus unis, in so ipsum, ipsum factum is nilum cor factum est. In iso vita erat, et vita erat, lux habinum, lux in tenebris, lux in tenebris, et non comprehenderum. Fruit homo bisus et el con nomen on ad juanes. Ic veni tu testimonium ut testimonium vivere tu lumine, domna estretum feirum, non ere ti regut, sed ut testimonium vivere tu lumine, ere lux vere qual lumine, omnem hominem verientim in hoc mundum. In mundo erat, in mundo spirit sum factus est, in mundo sum non coniovi, in propria venitit sum non luceperum, qual qual altemo ceperum deum despole statim filios te fieri, quis qui vendi nomine eius, qui non risanguinibus, nec voluntati panis, nec voluntati viri, se nec deum nati sum. Et verbum carro factum est, et habitabit in nobis, et minimus gloria meus, gloria in quasi unigenite a patre, per un grazie veritatis. Neo gratias. How many from the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. How many from the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. How many from the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. 
O God, who art our refuge and our strength, through thy mercy on thy people who cry to thee, in thine the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and all thy saints, in mercy and goodness hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners, and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May Saint Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, pray for us. St. Catherine of Stenning, pray for us. St. Wilfred of York, pray for us. St. Richard of Chichester, pray for us. St. Louina of Alfriston, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our Heavenly Patron Saints, pray for us. Our Holy Guardian Angels, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us.
Christ, it is the